service. Y'all give these ladies some work. So right now, I'm, I want to open it up to uh, my advocates over here. So any one of y'all that want to start, we want to talk about a little bit about the problem, right? But we want to focus on solutions. Okay, so brother, you want to go first? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother, Don, for having us. Everybody want to say thanks, everybody, for coming out. In the name of Allah, the beneficent and merciful, the with the God, but Allah. That's a good one. Peace and greetings of Assalamu alaikum. I like to think about Dayton, Ohio. This is I moved here. I've had some run in with the police myself, just being a new member here, resident here for the last eight years. I just don't think, brother Don, into the panel, listen to the mother's story. And like we've had these stories for over 400 years in this country, Brother Don. And I think this has not much changed. I was just watching, watching a movie called Slave by Another Name. And this is something that's repeated going on with us as a people in this country. But we're going to go with the solution for Dayton first. Number one, y'all know that Dayton does not have a lot of African Americans on the police force. Number one, it's not a lot of diversity. And they don't have enough sensitive training on how to deal with our community. I had a case in point of calling one myself, Brother Don. And if it wasn't me having the teachings of the teachings of the Most Honorable Allah Muhammad, how to teach, how to be disciplined, but they came to try to kill me. You see what I'm saying? This is in the mentality of some of our police department brothers and sisters in this city. So what we need, we need to see, Brother Don, if we're not working on, I don't know why Chief Bill does not have a lot of us on the force, number one. And number two, how to deal with our community at a better situation. That's dealing with locally. Now, on a high level of people, I'll say this, and this may be controversial. I have one of my brothers, Brother Stephen, the honest, what I'm saying, Brother Don, we've been dealing with this solution over 400 years. I think it's now time to talk about something new. And what I'm talking about is a spiritual solution. It goes back into what we read in the Bible, I believe. If you look at Pharaoh, his mother was to kill all male children and spare the female. I believe that we're living in that day all over again, Brother Don. And my news, our solution here in the nation, everybody knows what Mr. Lewis Farrakhan was saying. We have to talk about something different. And everybody who ever read the Final Call newspaper for over the years we've been here, seeing the brothers in the neighborhood knock on the door, I really think our solution is going to be point number four, Brother Don. Everybody know what point number four is, is that the fact that talks about that we have to get maybe our own territory eventually and do something for ourselves. I just believe that that may be the solution because these stories, I've been hearing these stories since I've been these young brothers and sisters right as far as age in the 70s and the 60s. My father grew up in the Panther Party, later in the nation was not, Brother Don. So I've been in forums like this through the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, been a military vet. And we still have these, these forums, which is great. We got mothers in the audience who've lost their sons. I've got mothers in Columbus from my hometown who've lost friends I grew up with in the 90s. So we still have these same problems. But one of the solutions for locally, Brother Don, for me, we need to have more of us in the police department. Maybe some sisters here. If Chief Bill, I'm not surprised Chief Bill not returning your call, my sister. Because that's how he wrote. He has a bad history to me. But on a high level, I think point number four is going to be the solution, Brother Thank you. So uh, Hi, my name is Yolanda Simpson. I am with Black Lives Matter in Miami Valley. Um, I've heard this story uh, from all three of the women. I am personally involved with all three of these women. Um, and uh, with great respect to this gentleman, uh, diversity in the police department is not going to change the police department. Black men and women are killing black unarmed people just as much as white people. Training is not going to change the police department. Implicit bias training is not going to change the police department. <coughs> Systemic racism is why the police de department was actually created to corral black people to keep black people out of white neighborhoods. It is not the police department. What has to happen is that the black community needs to police the black community. Community policing is the only thing that's going to change the disrespect that we receive from the police department. And community policing doesn't mean that you walk up and down the street with AR-15s and you beat the crap out of young men who are wearing their pants down low. 
Community policing means that you have services that are going to help the community to rebuild and to grow and have economic equality. That is the only thing that's going to change the black community. We cannot rely on the white establishment, the white police department, white supremacy, white systemic racism, and white people to fix what's going on in the police department. I don't care how many black Negro men and women you get into a systemically racist uh, institution, they are going to do exactly what their white peers are going to do. The only thing that's going to actually save us from being killed is not as much as I think that we have to get legislation and bills and laws in place. The only thing that's going to change it is us. And if we don't wake up to the fact that they are killing us economically, they are killing us politically. They are killing us on the street. They are killing us in our education. They are killing us in college. They are killing us every way that they, they can. And we don't take responsibility for the fact that it is us. It is the community that has to police our people. That's the only thing that's going to change the police department. That's right. <laughs> Pastor of the Word Church here uh, in Dayton and uh, was very active in the beginning of um, getting the uh, protest together for the hospital uh, when Premier closed its hand along with uh, Brother Don. Uh, my, my, my perspective again is the amalgamation of uh, Sister Yolanda uh, and my brother right here is that 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 I believe that uh, there has to be diversity. I think that, you know, at least try. You know, I think that, that we're at the point now that anything uh, new is better than what we have right now. Uh, and so I think that becomes important. Uh, but, but as a Kingian scholar, I recognize that Dr. King, the last year of his life when he began talking about economic empowerment, that's when the heat really got turned on. Uh, and I believe that, uh, that economic empowerment called counts. Folk, uh, city, city uh, politicians and legislatures don't want to see money get messed up. And, 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 and if this was happening in Oakwood, if this was happening uh, in Centerville, uh, something would be done uh, right away. Uh, and so again, I do believe that the economic empowerment piece becomes so important uh, that, that if we position ourselves, it's going to take some time because again, it is systemic. Uh, you can put uh, a man a shark uh, in a in a 45 uh, gallon tank, the shark is only going to grow as big as its environment. And so if you do put uh, new police officers of color, people of color, uh, minorities into that system that are not strong enough, that are not uh, don't don't have their mind made up, that I am not going to succumb uh, to the form to the to the to the format of being a racist and uh, and and, and um, acting violently toward my people. They will become um, another police officer, just a different color. Uh, and so I think that again, it takes a combination of both of these things. And again, to these mothers, I you have my uh, sincere, deepest. I don't even my my vocabulary is not verbose enough to come up with a word to, to say how sorry I am uh, about what happened to you. Let, let me say this, let me, for a point of transparency and honesty, uh, I come from an upper middle class family, both of my parents are college graduates, and, and I want to say this just, just for my sake. I used to think that if black people got killed by police, it was because they did something wrong. And, 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 and I'm saying that because if I thought that, I can't be the only one who felt that way. But then as I got older, I went through my own experiences, as some of you uh, who may know me uh, know, uh, but then I start to understand that, 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 your, that black skin is a threat to some people. I.E. Rodney King, he was on the ground doing nothing. He had succumbed, but the fact that he was black meant that he kept on hitting him. And we see over and over again, uh, you have white boys, the white guys that shoot up schools, just, just, just what the last two weeks we had three shootings and every one of them got arrested. Come on, talk back to me, somebody. Okay, but if your skin is anything other than white, if your race has to be hyphenated in America, Tony Morrison says, then you succumb to the violence of police. Uh, and so I want you to know that I'm praying for you. I'm so sorry to hear that and that we are going to work uh, fastidiously to see if we can find some solutions to the issues that we're facing. Let me, let me say something real quick, Carlos. I just want to uh, 
uh, interjected a disclaimer. Um, you know, Malcolm X, can y'all hear this? Malcolm X said that um, to be a black nationalist means that you're concerned about the black nation, okay? So it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or if you're a Muslim or if you're an atheist. So one of the things I want us to do tonight is to be patient with each other. Because we don't all believe alike, okay? And so everybody, some, some people's gonna have a different opinion than other people, but the bottom line is, they're killing all of us. They don't ask you whether you're a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew before they shoot you. So we are gonna hear some different opinions this evening so I just want everybody to be uh, tolerant and remember Christ. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, brother. Um, I just want to speak on, um, first of all, these women. <coughs> I, I have so much admiration for you all. I think of my kids when I'm out here fighting. Um, one thing I realize is, as to your stories, none of your kids were committing a crime. None of them. And that's something that we got to really keep in mind as well. You would think that they would be fighting crime, but they're not. So um, we're here for social justice reform. And when I think of reform, I think of changing or correcting systems that disproportionately affect blacks in a negative way. Some of those systems are voting rights, politics, civil rights, economic rights, health rights, educational rights, basically human rights. I want to deal with the part of the politics when it comes to voting. What I realized is some of the leaders that we have, especially our judges here in these United States. A lot of them are backed and funded by the Fraternal Order of Police. The Fraternal Order of Police fights against our civil rights. I went on to their website, the Fraternal Order of Police, and there's a legislation by Senator Conyers, a Democrat of Michigan. That legislation says he wants to end racial profiling. The Fraternal Order Police on their website is against that. They want to racially profile us by your race, your origin, ethnic origin, even just to initiate a traffic stop. They want to be able to racially profile. That's what they want to do. I believe in my whole heart, that's what these women are fighting against, is the fraternal order of police, that union. When that union gets behind certain politicians, they give them a questionnaire. That questionnaire, one of the questions says, Will you allow, if any of our officers are in a situation where there's police brutality, what people say about police, police brutality, that the union is asking that politician to make sure that a union representative can be at all meetings. In other words, if something happened with these young ladies and they were before a judge, the fraternal order police is going to be right there. We're not. We don't have a voice. The fraternal order police have a lot of money, a lot of things going on. And I'm saying to you all is this. Make sure you be careful who you vote for. Because a judge should not, a judge should not be funded by the fraternal order police. They are supposed to be nonpartisan. If a judge is funded by the fraternal police, they will not give him civil rights, period. So I got a lot more to say about that, just gonna throw that out there as well, but just make sure you all, just make sure we 
make sure we get out of the boat and register the boat all the time. I don't care. And please, don't hold back your boat. Get involved. Voting is not a cure-all. Let me just say that. Voting is not a cure-all. I'm saying it for those who say, I don't vote on all that stuff. It's not a cure-all. It's just one of the many hundreds of things that we can do to get justice for them as well as us and for the future. If we don't do something now, tomorrow will not be promised. Thank you, brother. Okay, now we're going to... Uh... We're going to open it up. We've got to move up right along, y'all. So keep your comments, keep your questions brief, keep the answers brief because we only got a few more minutes. So uh, we want to hear from the audience. Come on, sister, up to the mic, right? Remember what I said, y'all. Let's be patient and, and uh, understanding with each other. We're we not all at the same place in life. Amen. Do I have to stand right here? Can I walk around? Can everybody hear me? Talk in the mic, sister. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Talk in the mic. No. Talk in the mic. Can you just speak right into the mic? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes. First and foremost, we're here to talk about a solution. I am a 38-year-old woman. I am Dayton, Ohio. I've seen a lot from DeSoto Bass to the south side to the north side. Let me tell you three, I feel your pain. My energy is very strong and I feel your pain. We have to do something about this. Not we have to, but we're going to. My generation is stepping up and we're doing something about it. We, all of us copper colored people, we have the shortest memory ever. We really, really do. We have mommies that, do you know how many people, how many women in the city of Dayton alone are hurting? Let's not mention every week we have a death, we have a homicide, we have something. The police are not here to save us. White supremacy is not going to save us. We're living in systematic oppression, so that's not going to save us. So who else is going to save us but us? That's what I want to talk about. You want a solution? I have a solution. The solution resides inside of us. But as long as we keep on sitting up here leaning and believing in a certain way, if we always done what we if we always do what we always done, we're gonna always get what we always got. Don't you guys think it's time for a change? Yes. Right. Where's change gonna start? Because see, I, I can already tell from several of you that my suggestions will hurt a few feelings. But in the end, it's gonna come out and it's a very useful tool. And that tool is within yourself. Look at these beautiful copper colored babies over here. You guys have a chance, but it's within yourself. You have to rise. See, guess what though? I bet you any amount of money, these babies aren't being taught their constitutional amendments. It starts from the kindergarten. If they really wanted us to become successful citizens, we would learn our constitutional amendments starting from kindergarten. They won't do that. Why is that? We gotta ask ourselves why is that? I know, has anybody in here heard about the schools to prison pipeline and how that works? I give my school, excuse my French, hell about it because I know and I see the direction that you're going in, but you won't get mine like that. We have to start somewhere and it's within ourselves. It's within ourselves as long as we keep believing that an entity is going to come and save us instead of us putting one fourth in front of the other and stop being afraid. You don't have to live in fear anymore, people. Our 400 years is over. It's over this year. We don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in fear of the living or the dead. Period. Thank you, Life sir. is not about that. Thank you, sister. I love you. No, I love you. Okay. I don't care. My solution lies within ourselves. My solution lies, see, we, we are very fearful of each other. We are very fearful of each other. We have our men sitting up here killing us. We have these women we can't have trust to do nothing. It all starts within us and educating ourselves. But how are we going to educate ourselves? We educate ourselves with the truth and the unadulterated truth, period. Because if we keep on lying to each other, these 400-year lies 
the next 100 year next 100 years we're going to be in the same situation except for it's only going to be just a couple of us left literally probably the whole city will be in here and this will be it <laughs> that's right we have to educate ourselves your sons should still be living here if they knew they would still be here and I'm not t and I'm not lying to you we have to educate we got, ourselves. We kind of got to push it along. Iris, did you want to say something? I see you leaning forward from the seat back. Okay, so let, I let, are you letting us respond to? Yeah, but we want to be, we got to move along, though. Everybody. And so does that mean how? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, so just to piggyback on what she was saying, the, the bottom line is what, what the most important thing she said was, if we keep doing what we're doing, we'll keep getting what we're getting. I don't care if the police officer is trained in implicit bias. I don't care about that because he may have implicit, he could be as, he may have a Ku Klux Klan outfit in his closet. I don't care. What I care about is before these young men have to actually in, interact with the police officer, Yolanda has already gone to Jamarco's car and said, baby, you need to get up. There's something going on. You need to get up. Before the police interacts with Sean Kate's two sons, Yolanda is coming to the house. Wait a minute, Miami Valley did what? Miami Valley hurt your son? The problem is, is that we have to interfere in the fact that we are letting our young men and our young girls and our community interact with the police. That should never happen. We don't need the police in our neighborhoods if we're taking care of our neighborhoods. We have two former Black Panther Party members here. They understood what it means to community police. They understood what it means to have health care in the community. They understood what it mean, meant, meant to feed their communities. If we don't get in between the police and the Black community, it's never going to change. Before Dante Martin, was sitting in that car. I should have been there saying, baby, I need you to get up because they're calling the police on you. That's where I should have been. That's where we all should be. You know, before John Crawford III was killed, you know, somebody should have been there for the John Crawford family and said, we're gonna fight for you because this is not fair. We are allowing systemic racist institutions to take care of our community. It's time for us to take our community back. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to push it right along. Anybody else? Because we don't know each other. Come on. Uh, Chief, 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 Right now, we had a, the petitions we had is not valid, so we're in the mix of uh, getting them legalized, getting legalized petitions. And, and you'll have something out on your Facebook or your website? Yeah, I definitely, I, you know, you want to give me an email or okay. whatever, I mean, because I'm going to definitely, I'm already going to be emailing them to other families in different cities in Ohio. So, yeah, they're, they're to be, if you want them, you got them. Who's next? Let's push it right along. I know y'all got something to say. Who's next? Nobody? I'm a, my man in the back back here. Hi. Um, uh, I'm a part of the uh, Industrial Workers of the World uh, Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee. Uh, we're involved with um, organizing prison laborers um, to use their collective power to change conditions within prisons. Um, the problem is that us on the outside, well, people on the inside are mostly white people, but on the outside, uh, we're, we're all white people. Um, and we need more black voices on the outside. Um, and it's a, it's a prisoner-led organization. Um, but uh, I just, I want to encourage people to think about the idea of, of using collective power from within prisons um, because there are so many more people, so many more prisoners than there are uh, the people oppressing them. Um, Thank you, brother. 
Yeah, um, I, it's a decentralized uh, organization. Uh, who it's run by a uh, rag, radically anti-racist, feminist, um, anti-hierarchy uh, union, and uh, it would be led by the prisoners uh, in whichever, whatever prisons reach out to contact us. And we basically facilitate um, sending literature, um, doing phone drives for people, uh, you know, calling the the uh, wardens or whoever, um, posting on social media, things like that. Hey, there you go. Hey, Don. Want to say uh, this, the fact that is that we, we talk about solutions. I just want to make sure we understand we have the solutions right here. We have the new Black Panther Party. You're doing work in the community. We don't want to. Black Lives Matter. The mother's here. My brother's here too. You know, pastor here. So I want to make sure, and I think people in the audience, I think those who come here are involved with something here. But I'm going to talk about what my sister said more about we doing things over and over to expect different results. And I think that's where I hear what we should be doing. Now again, going back to the police, I believe what my sister says here, definitely how to make sure we stand between the black community and the police department. But I think as we are still in this fight, ladies and gentlemen, my job is to make sure that we're protecting young black men and women on how to deal with the police, Brother Don. Because guess what? As we leave here, we may run into a racist cop. And one of the things that we train in the Nation of Islam is we train young men and women on how to deal with the police. Because guess what? I'm going to know how to learn how to deal with them when I get pulled over. And any attempt of a loud or any attempt over your hands as a black man, you're shot. So I want to make sure that one of the solutions we are doing, we want to do in the community with, with Black Lives Matter or anybody else, we have to teach our young people on how to deal with authority. Because the police has the authority in them at that time. And if you're not careful, you will be gone. I've been with it four or five times, mothers. So I know there is a way that we're, that's one solution, though, that we have to, we definitely have to police our own communities. I agree with my sister 100% on that. But as we do, as we do that, we know the Black Panthers have a history of doing that. And what happened? They came in and do go after the Panther Party. We have a history, we see the history here, ladies and gentlemen. When we police ourselves and do something for ourselves, the oppressor still comes in and want to take control because of the economic power. Let me, ask, let me ask a question real quick. Uh, I want to ask Dr. White. Uh, but because the church is sponsoring this meeting tonight, okay, and one of the things that we wanted to do uh, is uh, change the narrative of the church. The church, the black church is under fire. And you know, we talk about this, uh, Pastor, on social media. Like, the black church is under fire because, especially these, this new generation, these millennials, they feel as though the church is not relevant. And so uh, they, they are really angry. Brother Muhammad, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, they are really angry with the church. Okay, So um, how can we change the dynamic as far as how the church relates to uh, the community and, and these issues that we're talking about? I, I, I concur. Uh, I'm <laughs> fourth generation uh, black Baptist pastor. Uh, and I've uh, been in church all my life, but I concur that the church has moved away from its nascent uh, roots of being uh, advocates for social justice. The black church, uh, when we look at uh, whatever gains primarily has been made in, in black America uh, in the uh, following reconstruction up until now, uh, the black church has been um, intimately uh, involved in those gains. Uh, but the problem that we are seeing now is that there has been a commercialism of the gospel, consumerism. Uh, capitalism has invaded uh, the church and we strayed away from the very tenets and teachings of Jesus Christ uh, as a radical social justice fighter. Jesus was a radical. That's what got him killed. He didn't get killed because he was a nice guy. He got killed because he preached a radical kingdom where everybody was equal and that God treated us as, as sons and daughters within the economy of that kingdom. And so he was in the vein of those Jewish prophets, uh, of 8th century Jewish prophets of Amos, 
in Isaiah uh, that preach, uh, woe unto those who scatter the flock, woe unto those who abuse uh, uh, orphans and widows, uh, and we've strayed away from that. And so I would suggest that uh, for those who do have relationships with your pastor, challenge them. Well, ask them, why, why are we not more doing more social justice things? Why are we not doing voter registration? Why are we not involved uh, in these protests when police uh, violence are uh, happening? And let me say this, and, and I'm done, and I'll stop when we gotta move, but I was just sharing with, with, with Brother Buford, I'm reading a book right now um, on um, pri prophetic uh, pragmatism, which is a philosophical perspective on how to uh, uh, fight injustice. But what happened in slavery as slaves were being introduced to Christ, those who did not know Christ out of Africa, uh, one of the questions they had was, if a person, a slave gets saved, what happens with their body? Because if we say that they're saved and they become a part of the body of Christ, we can't keep them slaves. The two don't just don't go together because there is an emancipatory effect of salvation. I'm no longer safe, uh, bound because I'm saved. And so the argument became how they fixed this was, let's just tell them when they can get saved now and it'll take effect when they die and they can get to heaven. And that's what I see has happened to the black church. We have this otherworldly uh, 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 process about ourselves where we're saying, you know what, get saved now and you can enjoy it and make a difference when you get to heaven. But I'm saying that salvation is a communal component. Salvation says not only am I interested in saving your soul, but I want this community saved. I want this community transformed, I want this community uh, modified, and I'm even saying that, you know what, if you won't come to my church, you won't become a Muslim, you won't become whatever you are, it don't matter, but we are going to fight for social justice for everybody because that is the ethical thing to do. And so that's my reply, uh, Brother Dominic. Okay. That, that, do you know the history of Christianity and Catholicism? We can have that conversation offline, sweetie, because we're going we to be all night and I'm not going to back down that Christianity is a black thing. The oldest Bible was found, a Coptic Bible, which is an African Bible. And you're not going to tell me Christianity is the white man's religion because there's no way in the world that the God of the slave master and the God of the slave was the same person. Everything that's in, in the Bible has been told to us and it's false. Let's have the conversation we'll, offline. We'll, 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 We'll do that at another time, oh, Tish, I promise you. I promise you we'll get that. We'll this have is another. the reason why we don't believe in ourselves. This okay. is the reason why we don't have power within ourselves because we're so far stuck on a belief system that hasn't worked for generations and generations and generations and it's still killing us. And you're still trying to push this and push this and push this. Let me tell you the difference between then and now is because we couldn't read then. We were not allowed to read now. Today in 2019 we, there's no, nothing blocking us from reading, from learning. Not only learning but understanding and comprehending. You cannot sit up here and tell me that what this Bible is representing to Today and to especially Deuteronomy, especially the brutal book of Deuteronomy. You cannot tell me what we see today in the Holy Bible, which every Sunday that they have been preaching the same scriptures for the last 400 years in, in, in the process of killing our sons, raping our daughters, hanging our ancestors, and, and uh, uh, incarcerating innocent our innocent men incarcerating us, killing us. Thank and you. we still have to sit up here and forgive Tish, our oppressors. I, 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 I don't think that's what he, I don't think that's what he said. I, I appreciate. You have, you have another question. I appreciate, wait a minute, bro. I appreciate uh, my sister being here. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Uh, you know why? Because a lot of us ain't honest. <laughs> About, this well, is my generation and younger. This a lot of us about, say we Christians and then we go home and, and smoke a doobie or something, right? <laughs> or go to the club, right? And, and so I appreciate, me and her, we go back and forth on social media all the time. And I appreciate her because um, she's honest, right? And you remember in the scripture when uh, Saul killed Christians, right? Before he came, became Paul, right? And I'm not trying to force that on you, my sister. You can't, baby. I'm but, I, but all I'm saying is I appreciate the fact. See, we, we, we those of us who call ourselves Christians and Muslims, we are uncomfortable with people that don't believe like we do. And we say they should come. And we ain't inviting them, right? But we actually should be welcoming to the people, right? Amen? Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. That the churches, when something like this happens in our community, the churches need to speak up. Well, when is that going to start to happen? Today. Because you said the millennial is bad. You said the millennials are mad. That's them. It's all been pissed off since that damn black church thing. Yeah. 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 Not one preacher, clergy, church congregation reached out to me and a whole bunch of mothers. Okay? So, and I'm like, okay, you say this starts to happen now? Mm -hmm. let, 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 me, let me, again, let me, let me say that I, I'm sorry. I, I completely, I'll apologize for me. I can't apologize for what anybody else does. But I'm saying that today, my, my, my goal is to develop relationships with every one of you. I met with Jerome McCrory just this week, and I believe he called you while I was sitting at the table with him to set up uh, a meeting so that we could talk. Did you get that? Yeah, I, I, okay. I certainly did. Okay. But, and, but, and, but, and, but this comes with me because I, I met you once. Yes, ma'am. Downtown when y'all were having that rally about the um, Premier Health, mm -hmm. the hospital. And while I'm standing there, all I can think was, well, where was this rally at? When my son was kids, Absolutely. you know, y'all sitting here, y'all all up and above about the hospital, but what about human life? Right. And I and, and I have and I have met with Reverend McCarray so that I can learn how to be but this trained. Is, this is not just about. Okay. I'm not saying just you. I can't, I can't, I can't speak for every other, let, let me say, and I'm saying this, and I cannot speak for every other pastor, but let me be clear that my intention, I met with, with Reverend McCrory, I met with uh, with uh, Bishop Cox to find out which steps and methods they use when there was a police shooting, so that I can be trained on how to do that, so that Chad E. White, and I can only speak for me, can be an advocate for those mothers and those families who've had their children violently snatched away from them, pornographically snatched away from them by uh, by police officers. And so I do apologize. Okay, let, let's let Brother Steve go ahead, Brother Steve. Oh, Lockett gonna beat me up. Uh, one of the things that I'm mistaken is that unity is power. And it sounds like we have a solution uh, that we want to get the churches more active. But as we know, not, not everybody is in any organization is, has that revolutionary spirit. So my thought was, how about we possibly try to extract individuals in, the, in each church to represent the church that has that revolutionary spirit and we form a coalition of, of, of those individuals, they'll represent the church and then they can uh, come to the meetings, but then they can also take that information back to the church so that the churches will begin to become more, uh, more um, aware, more informed, and more active. Yeah, you understand like what I'm saying? I like that. Yeah, shorter or sweeter, you want to bring like certain people from different churches to come and learn and da 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 well you, we have an organization, we can tell you everything the facts, the stats, the every. I mean, I mean that's right. when you but get they will be a part of your organization that's well, what I'm well, saying, well, well, you'll build your organization one of the reasons why my pastor had us put on this event is because he wanted to know he, we, we wanted to listen okay to the concerns of the people in the community because uh, this social justice crisis is, is getting worse, right? right? And all that stuff Trump is talking is becoming real, right? So we maybe we haven't done what we were supposed to do in the past, right? But now we're going to step up and we're going to try to do some, some, some uh, revolutionary so stuff. How, Let me get Iris real quick. How can we get that started, though? Uh, but this, this is actually supposed to be a strategic meeting. 
All right. So, you know, that's why I said when, before y'all leave here, and we, you know, get, get everybody's information. You know what I'm saying? Hook, we're going to hook everybody up. Go ahead. One of the challenges I'm going to tell you will have with some of the churches, some of the prominent black churches, is that they are in the pockets yeah. of the politicians. To be more specific, they are literally giving money to preach a particular sermon. And a lot of people don't know that. They are, they are literally giving money to preach a particular sermon to their flock or their masses or whatever. And, and what happens, you're not going to hear them speak up. So it, it would be wonderful if you can have people with the revolutionary spirit to be able to take the information back to the church. But the reality of it is we need to be honest about what the church is. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, that, and I'm not, and I'm not indicting all the churches because I know some of the, there are some pastors or some bishops that walked out of that particular meeting that they had in order to be able to access these funds. That was like, are y'all crazy? Mm. So that's going to be a real challenge in trying to collectively get the churches within our Dayton communities right. to be able to. Uh, so, uh, so be so part of one of the things we do is. Is as a member of the church, right? That's right. As a member, you know I'm wrong, right? But as a member of the church, right? Then I can be the, the star of the, of the new thought, right? Well, it's for further that I want to say that because when we talk about the church, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, we are the church. We're not looking at a minister. With those days, my sister are over. Like Sister Ivers just said, there are some ministers in the United States, it's only in Dayton, that are brought and paid for. So now it takes up the revolutionary because you see what's going on. They're, they're not making any kids when it comes to homosexuality. They're forcing the church to change their ways, some of them. So with social justice, with us as a people, on um, police brutality, why would a minister, if it's okay if he, if he or she is against it, but we on this are the church and the body system. It's the, it's the people with the number. It ain't the building. This building will make any decision, Pastor, so in the audience. It's the people who are sitting in the pews, and you're going to have division because that's the day and time we're living in. There's going to be a split because Jesus said, I come to divide. I can represent the, the sheep from the goat. we got to make a decision on whether we're the sheep or the goat in this time of life. Don't look at a minister. Look at your relationship with, your, with God himself and you decide on the right side of history where you're going to be on. Because we keep looking at someone else, we're going to be waiting for a long time, like my sister said. But you have your relationship with, we have relationship with God, we get our march orders from God ourselves, and we'll be on the right side of history. Amen. Before you go, Shante, because we got to wrap it up. Anybody that did talk, uh, get him the mic back there. Mary. Oh, Mary, I'm sorry. And then Kevin and Dina. And then uh, Brother Mike and... Uh, I'll, I'll be quick, I okay. promise. Okay, we're going to be just, quick. I just want to make sure that everybody knows, in addition to Ohio Families United Against Police Brutality, in addition to Black Lives Matter Miami Valley, there are other powerful black-led organizations in Dayton. Racial Justice Now. They never have this many people at their meetings. Mm -hmm. Neighborhoods Over Politics. Look them up and get involved with them because they are very good, important organizations. Thank you. Can you give it to uh, Kevin Callender and Dina and then uh, Mike Miles sitting back here? Y'all, because we, we in trouble. I'm in trouble. They're going to start charging. I ain't got no money. We'll take a back Basically, I just wanted to know so um, when is the next meeting? When do we meet? Well, well what, what the plan is. What is, is the that plan? The plan is to get a um, a committee together. Okay. Wait a minute, because we got we got we got. I don't like committees either, but I mean we got to organize in order to have some. We got to have a couple people sit down and say we can have this meeting. So I'll I'll announce it, and uh, we're gonna get all these good people involved. All right, and I'll I'll let you know. I promise it's gonna be real soon. Go ahead. So whoever I need to gather up so we can meet with a few months. Okay. 
I don't have a son. Sometimes I'm scared to have one. Like, mm -hmm. they, it's when it is girls. It's getting so my daughter went through by police like, too. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's exactly. girls. It's a bunch of women. And I have to remind my children every day you are black. Yes, you go to the school that you go to, but you have to remember you'll pay you'll pay harder. Before they see me coming, they think I'm angry anyway. So I have to say, hey, I'm just here to see my children. I work night shift. Sometimes I miss them, so I go to the schools to see them, to check them. So that's what we just so just let me know when the meeting is. Yeah, okay. just my husband. Will. Definitely, because we have we're in the midst of uh, setting up some uh, some more meetings with uh, some state leaders, and uh, we're just going to keep going. Come on, Mike. Please don't mistake my compassion for my people for anger. Please mm -hmm. no. We ain't. Remind me of me as a baby. Excuse me just for a second. I'm going to be brief and I'd like to speak to the issue that uh, we all are doing something wrong. Okay? What we've been doing wrong here is being black. When you are black in America, you already been born doing something wrong. So if you have the mindset that that's the, the philosophy that you're behind the eight ball, as they would say. We have to think about what it's going to take to be men and women with your head held up high, and you are the solution. But the solution becomes when you decide that you're free. There is no legislation, there is no policeman, there is no judge, there is no preacher, there is no religion that's going to free you other than you decided that you're going to be free and that you ain't going to take it. So that's my brief solution to the problem. Go home, teach your kids not to take it, tell your mate not to take it, tell yourself when you look in the mirror every day that you're not going to take it. That's the solution. Nobody messes with anybody that doesn't take it. They mess with people that are willing to take it. And I also look to my white brothers and sisters, and I challenge you, go home, tell your kids, don't take it, and don't expect us to take it. And that's why most white folks are Confederates, and they're still fighting the Confederate war. This is what your president is doing. That's why they're getting guns and, we're and they're not. scared of you. They're not killing you by accident. This is something that they've done from the beginning. And they'll do it until you decide to stand up and be men and women. Thank you, brother. Something. 30 seconds. Okay. 30 seconds. Superintendents to, to educate our kids to help these mothers. If we don't figure out how to get black lawyers to come and take these cases for free, then we're never going to get justice. The Crawford family is trying to get justice. Their, their trial was set for Monday. They have pushed it all the way back to October. We should have been massively going to the judge and saying that is not acceptable. It is imperative that we understand just what Mike is saying. We are never going to be free if we keep relying on white America to take care of us. They're not going to do it. There is absolutely no way that a mother should have to bury their child and try to figure out how to pay for it. That is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard in my life. There is absolutely no reason why children in the black community should have to go to school hungry. And we're sitting around forming committees and talking about, talking about it. We are talking about it and talking about it and talking about it and ain't nothing changing. If we don't stop talking about it, 
You should not have to keep talking to Sabrina about whether or not you were to come to her meeting. Just show the hell up. Show up for black people, period. That's what we need to do. So this is something, this is one of the things we need. Don't stop me. This is one of the things that we need to resolve. We need to get lawyers. What about uh, Michael Wright? What about Benoit? What about all of the other white lawyers? We need to get them, talk to them, say, hey, we have some mothers who need your help. You, you got us? You gonna do this for free? You know, and if they don't, put them on blast. You know, and that's what we need to do. Revolution is not about apologizing. Thank you. It's about demanding. And our community deserves it. Stop meeting. I don't want another committee. I don't give a crap about a committee. I want change. I want the legislation to change. I want her to be able to open up her son's cases. How are we going to do that? That's what I want to talk about. Those are the solutions I want to talk about. Not another committee. Just in case we need that's that's that is a, a true statement. Mm -hmm. Case of Lord does not take the case for free. We have enough money in our communities to raise the money for these mothers. Okay. And let's do that. And and, and to our um, the positive side of that, um, uh, there's a lot of people in Davis doing a lot of stuff. It's a big, it's a big task because I know we do a lot of stuff. And I'm, I'm wore out because I can't get people to help. You know what I mean? And a lot of the events, Sabrina, you know, the events that me and Sabrina had, we had to end up spending our own money. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's the, that's the challenge to overcome the complacency and the apathy. You know, in the original Black Panther Party, Huey said. There's three things that we up against. Apathy, inertia, what was that? He was in the bar. <laughs> but anyway, it's 50 some years later, we still apathetic. You know what I'm saying? Our people are still uh, being put to sleep by the drug called capitalism. That's what it's really all about. Because we comfortable, man, right? We ain't strong. And so maybe this time is a blessing in disguise. That's what the minister said. Right. Amen. So anyway, uh, my sister, you, did you want to say something before we leave? I just wanted to introduce you. Come on up. So um, we get ready to wrap it up, y'all. But um, there's a, a new progressive movement going on in Dayton. And uh, my sister right here is uh, one of the leaders of that progressive movement. And she's, uh, she's going to run for Dayton City Commission. Her name is Shanice Turner Slaw. And we're we going to get involved and help her to get that seat. You want to say anything? Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much. I just want to apologize. I came in until the end of the conversation. It's another event going on this evening. But I appreciate the panelists. And I appreciate your, your passion, and I want to give my condolences to the, to the mothers and let them know that we are here to support you, and that's exactly what this, my candidacy is about. It's not about me, it's about our community and making sure that we have policy in place to protect our mothers, our families, to protect our community as a whole. So I ask that you join with me so that we can have these in-depth conversations, so that we can make sure that whenever the situations occur, that we have the backing to support our members of our community. And so Tamiko has uh, my petition, and I will please ask that you sign it if you live in the city of Dayton, and if you are a registered voter, we're looking for volunteers, we're looking for people to stand behind. This is a movement, exactly. This is a movement, and you said it best, Ms. Simpson, that we cannot be apologetic, and we have to stand together. So I thank you all this evening. Thank you very much for hosting this event, and thank you for the invite. Thank you. She's back the way, too. Okay, so we done, y'all. They're going to kick me out of the church. So uh, last thing we're going to do is, go ahead, Bill. Because y'all been passing your Uh, I'm Bill Davis, and I've been working with uh, Single Payer Action Network uh, to try to get health care, better health care for everybody. Uh, 
Besides that, I've been working, I'm kind of fed up with the political parties. I don't claim membership in any of them. Me either. Uh, but the way Ohio is, well, anyway. <laughs> um, I've been working for nonpartisan things, voting rights. Um, the ACLU gave us a template to work on uh, for immigration. And we've also been working on uh, voting, jail voting. We, uh, I worked with the League of Women Voters this year to register a half a dozen or so um, inmates at Montgomery County Jail so that they wouldn't miss being able to get registered because they were in during the deadline. So we registered a few people so that when they got out, they'd be able to go vote. Hopefully they did. Um, but the ACLU is uh, an organization that looks up for looks out for everybody's civil liberties. Um, <coughs> I had a list here a second ago, but um, oh yeah, we're talking about capital punishment, criminal <laughs> law reform, uh, free speech, juvenile justice. Prisoners' rights, these are all things that are important to this community as well as other civil libertarians. And um, I haven't seen any people from the communities of color in, in any of our, uh, maybe one, I, I don't know. I haven't been real active, there's only so much one person can do. But, um, you know, if you want to get the help of the ACLU on some of the issues that you face, um, it would probably be helpful to have a, a more vibrant group in Dayton that's working with them. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, thank you to the panel. Yeah. I got, I got to wrap it up. Real, real quick, just to let you all know, uh, to the sister right here. We do get to do for ourselves when it comes to the black community. And what we started the last election, um, you know, you have the Democratic slate, you have all the Democrats, so you have the Republican slate, you have the Green slate. But we decided, uh, Donald, Sabrina, and a couple, and um, uh, Tamiko, what we did, we got a black slate. We said, these are the people we want to push our agenda. All right. And so this is a picture, I mean, you can see it later on. We put this out, we gave this out, but well, to me we gave this out to those that were voting. This is the black slate. And we said, we going to, these are the people we're going to have. And so this is a part of us doing something by us, for us. Even though it might be 92% Democratic, but it's some Republicans, some Green Party there, but we're not going to push a straight party. We're going to push for those who are going to do our issues. And a lot of times, when it comes to most of these parties out here, they are white-led. We do not have a black party. We don't have power. There you go. And so this is a start to say, this is what we're going to push from us by us. So just let me know that we are trying to do that and meet Thank you, and, and, and get things for us. Okay. Thank you, brother. I, I appreciate everybody coming out. Give me a hand, y'all. And uh, this is my show, y'all. Uh, uh, so we want to end uh, with. Uh, uh, our elders going to come and have a special prayer for the mothers. And so that's how we're going to end. We'll see y'all again next time. Next Saturday night, uh, our church, we're hosting a preach out. So we're going to have, uh, what is it, six preachers? Yeah. We're going to have six preachers starting from 10 in the morning till in the nine. evening. Nine in the morning. And we got uh, some Adventist preachers, plus we got uh, Kimba Cunningham and Michael Barron to we're going to have a meal, or we're going to have a vegetarian meal, and my mom is the cook, so you know it's good. <laughs> so we want to uh, extend a personal invitation, okay, to y'all to be a part of our church. You too, Tish, my sister. Everybody here, we want to extend an invitation to be a part of our church. Come on, sister. And I, I apologize to the organizers, but these people can talk all night. They get on my nerves. <laughs> I want to say that our arms are open wide to your mothers. And this prayer 
is really surrounding you. Uh, we talk and we've said a lot of things, but nobody knows like you know. And we want to pray for you and others like you that are so barriers. Heavenly Father, we come this time, Lord, as we lift our voices up in prayer. Every time that we can come together, Lord, and pray, it's a blessing, Lord, and now you have given us a pointed reason to pray for these mothers, Lord. They're hurting. They want solutions. Lord, they want to help save other mothers from going through what they have gone through. We all want that. So, Lord, there's always something we can do, but there's something that all of us can do all the time, and that's pray. Prayer is a solution in itself. You are in total control. So, Lord, we are praying for them, these mothers, these three mothers, Lord, and those other mothers that take hold of their hands, Lord, that have gone through and have gone through what they have gone through, Lord. We are praying, Lord, that you will comfort them and reassure them, reassure them, Lord, that their voices, their prayers will be answered. Lord, may we have empathy, may we care, may we love. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. God bless you.